Our first guest is someone I first met on my Cafe Mocha radio show, and I just knew I wanted to share her amazing story with everyone. She's an ER doctor in New York that has triumphed over tragedy and has been on the front lines of several pandemics, including COVID-19. Please welcome Dr. Arabia Millette. Hi. Hello. Hi. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me all the way from New York virtually. Well, oh, I hear that accent, Dr. Molek. It's so, oh, such a pleasure. Where are you Thank from? You. Well, I'm from the Bronx, so from the South Bronx, New York. Okay. Oh, gosh, I know my accent. I know everybody tells me that. I love it. I like it. It's the Adrian best. Adrian has one, too. You know, yes, Dr. Molek, you've been through a lot in your personal life from childhood as an adult tragedies that most people wouldn't be able to bounce back from. So tell us a little bit about what you've been through. Oof. Yeah, Lonnie, you're definitely right. I've, I've experienced a lot of hardships and challenges in my life. I grew up in the, in the Bronx, New York, in the South Bronx at the height of the crack epidemic, and my family was hit hard. But there were three major tragedies that, are, that struck my core and helped shape the dream of me becoming a doctor, which I've had since the age of five. Um, at age 12, I witnessed my mother attempted to commit suicide. And when the police and the paramedics arrived at our apartment to take her to the hospital, I overheard the police officer say to the paramedic, well, she's just another N-word. And, and that impacted me. Um, the second tragedy that occurred in my life, major tragedy, um, at the age of 17 years old, I had given birth to a boy, a baby boy. I became a teen mom. And unfortunately, several months later, he was murdered at the hands of his father. Oh, my God. Um, sorry. Um, sorry. Now I'm getting shaky. <sighs> sorry. <laughs> and uh, the last one, uh, last major tragedy, uh, was that my youngest sister at the age of 19 was shot to death near her college campus. And... Between the, my son and my sisters, that although they occurred six years apart from each other, but there were two ER doctors that really impacted my decision of becoming an, an emergency medicine physician, which you guys say ER doc. And the messages were similar. And the both of them had said to me was that I don't know why I'm saying this to you. Um, I just feel like God is speaking t through me to tell you to please become an ER doc because this country, I have a feeling that you are going to be one of the greatest ER doctors that the country will need. And so I did. And I left the United States and went straight to Cuba and received a full academic scholarship to study medicine at the Latin American School of wow. Medicine in Havana, Cuba and lived there for seven years. Doctor, having experienced so many tragedies, where do you get your inspiration and drive to keep you going? Yeah, it's not easy, Genius. It really isn't. Mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, I, I'm a child of God that was born and raised in the hood. And, and my know. struggles have become my strength. You understand? The fact that I'm still here is a testimony of my faith. And because God yeah. never gives you a vision without providing you the resources. And one of the resources that God had provided me was professional counseling. I was in counseling mm -hmm. for a long period of time just to basically talk about the emotional pain and psychological yeah. pain that I that I carried for so many years. I was getting tired of acting like this tough girl all the time, but knowing that in reality I was breaking down. And so it helped. Wow. As an ER doctor, you obviously see people when they need you the most. And a lot of times it's a matter of life and death. But tell us a little bit about, you know, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, I save lives. <laughs> yes, I see. you do. <laughs> I save lives, thank you. Um, I mean, I've treated uh, an array of different patients out here in, in the Bronx as well as in Brooklyn. And, and that's from gunshot wound victims to stab victims to critically ill patients and both children and adults. But that's not the only thing that's not the only thing that we see in the emergency department. It's not just the trauma and the critical ill patients. Mm -hmm. It's also the people that the society has forgotten, like the homelessness, the, um, the sex trafficking, the domestic violence, persons that are afflicted with acute psychiatric disorders as well as substance abuse disorders. So we have yeah. become a haven for those people as well. And, and to be honest with you, because I work in, in, in an underserved community that I was raised in, um, every, almost every person that walks through that emergency department remind me that I'm no different from the rest of them. My family have been afflicted with those same uh, situations as well. So God constantly right. remind me that, remember, not too long ago, you were in their position. That's right. You know, and we, we appreciate your service, Doc, 
And when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine, some people are afraid to take it for many different reasons. What would you say to those people, especially now with the news of the Johnson & Johnson being put on hold? So I, I totally understand they have apprehension. As a matter of fact, I'm really glad they did came out with the report about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine because we, pe they have to be transparent. People already are afraid and really don't have a trust of the American Medical Society for various reasons, right. especially black and brown people, because we experienced for over four decades unethical uh, medical and scientific experimentations against our own black and brown bodies. So I totally understand mm -hmm. that. However, for those who have fears and concerns, it's very important that you speak with your primary care doctor. Not me, I'm the emergency doctor. This is the, you do, I'm the last person that you want to see this cute face, but you should talk <laughs> to your primary care doctor because he or she um, will be able to provide a more in-depth conversation or knowledge or information to you to help with those fears. Um, please do not base your information on social media and hearsay because it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, it's very dangerous and it does, it does cause more harm than good. Uh, you know, when I talk to people about the vaccine, I tend to talk about black history especially black history in medicine. I think that what we forget as a people that black people had contributed to medicine globally for more positive than negative. I always tell the story about this enslaved African in Boston, not to necessarily to persuade people, but to enlighten people so that when they make the decision to take the vaccine, they can always reflect that, well, my people were the one that laid the foundation of, of, of vaccination. And so mm -hmm. Onesimus was this enslaved African from, that was kidnapped, obviously, from Ghana, taken to Boston during the early 1700s. During that time, Boston was hit with the smallpox virus. 30 to 40 percent mm -hmm. of the population already have died. And so what Onesimus taught, explained to his master was that back in Africa, they practiced a, a process or a method called inoculation, which has been around, been in existence for over a thousand years. And what, it, what, they, what he taught him was that if you take the pus from the small blister of the patient that has smallpox and introduce that pus material into the, in the wound of the next person, that person will develop antibodies and their immune system oh, will respond wow. to it. Because of that inoculation process that he taught his master, Onesimus saved Boston, which then later on led to the development of vaccinations in the United States. You better teach us something today. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That is such great information. We are very <laughs> grateful for that. Dr. Mollett, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. And you are truly an inspiration.